we're back on our lovely Feed the Beast server. It's just me on here today. In our last episode, we took a look at some of the uh, stuff that we've been working on in between episodes, like the Thom Craft Room and stuff. As you can see, I put the uh, I finally put the enchant. We have we've had an enchantment table for a while, but we never had any bookshelves for it. And uh, we went and found a few villages and uh, pillaged the village of all of their books and stuff. So we finally had enough books to uh, put enough up here because we had the we had the uh, the cow farm going, but that was going kind of slow. So we just went and found a bunch of books. Um, haven't done much with Thomcraft since the last episode. I actually kind of stopped because um, I kind of ran out of extra resources to throw at Thomcraft. So for for now, I'm going to put Thomcraft on hold and uh, work on some other stuff. As you can see, I also found some some apiaries. Ooh, actually, if you're unfamiliar with bees, I highly recommend you go check out um, a YouTuber by the name of Floristar. She's a really like absolute bee expert. So bees are part of forestry, and there's like they're like a whole thing all on their own. Like bees, bees are serious business, but they're amazing though. I personally, I don't know. Like, oh damn, I didn't get a princess out of this. That sucks. Okay, so I guess I only have only one working apiary now. <laughs> damn, I didn't get a princess. That sucks. Oh well, that's okay. But yeah, you can find uh, you can find beekeepers in villages, and I, I stole their apiaries because they're a little irrita irritating to make. Like they're not hard, but you need a machine for some of the stuff. So yeah, I just stole these. <laughs> but anyway, um, Dresnar finished his lovely thing over there that he wanted to do. I can't remember what I think. Where are you? I believe. I believe so. If not, he'll correct me, and I'll feel like an idiot. I remember all the other times until I'm on camera, then suddenly I forget everything. Sheep farm is working wonderfully, which is how he was able to finish that. <laughs> uh, we actually stopped it for a while because the chest filled up. It's getting pretty close to filling back up again. Um, what other stuff has happened? The tree's getting much, much bigger. Much, much, much bigger. But actually, rather than running all over the place, I can show you something else that I've worked on. Um, I'm gonna do more builds on camera, I promise. It's just right now I'm kind of I'm still pretty unfamiliar with a lot of these mods. I like I know them, but I'm not quite comfortable with building stuff on camera yet. Not because I'm afraid I'll mess up, just because like I'm not really good with them yet. So, well, not good enough to do stuff on camera at least because it takes me a little while. Like I know what I'm doing for the most part. Like I don't know everything, but I know a few enough to get me to where I need to go. But anyway, I got all of my chests. All nice and uh, organized. As you can see, some crystal chests. But I believe I actually pointed that out last episode. Did we do this stuff last episode? Yeah, we made the crystal ep uh, crystal chests last episode. Man. <laughs> As you can tell, I, I have a decent amount of time in between episodes, so I forget. But anyway, we got interconnecting uh, ender chests. Someone was wearing the iron chest plate. <laughs> Glass cover strip. Someone wore it and then put it back. That's funny. But yeah. Um... Yeah, as you can see, I relocated all my machines over here. Hmm. Because, actually, um, if you look down here, did a little bit of work. Yeah. This has been the majority of my work in between the episodes, which is why everything's nah, not too different from uh, last time. But this was the, gener the majority of the work that I did was creating some lava generation as you can see i've got an inner chest here which is uh, attached to as you can see the book over there it's attached to another ender chest in the nether which is making me lava which we'll go take a look at that in a second i got a transposer liquid transposer here so i've got cans over here and then uh when this ticks i think i might have it turned the wrong way i want this one to pull out oh no the other one took it oh no Eh, whatever. We'll go take a look at that in a little bit. But anyway, I've got that magmatic engine here, which is currently off. Like, it's overheated. Like, this is its overheated state. So it just, it just shuts off. I just hit it with the wrench, which I made a, a crescent hammer. Which The crescent hammer is actually the item for um, thermal expansion. Because I guess the shift right-clicking is messed up. But anyway, just right-click it and it'll kick back in. Because normally you can just use the build craft wrench, but shift right-clicking still works on the... Uh, Crescent hammer, so you couldn't like remove stuff properly. But yeah, I've got some magmatic engines back here too, powering my 
amazing, amazing redstone energy cell, which is a max. Well, not quite a max, but it'll be a max if I flip the engines on for a second. Which I'll, go, I'll go ahead and do that, I guess. Nothing too special, just engines on. This should uh, power it up here. Normally it's pretty quick, but uh, they're, you know, cool right now. So once they warm up, it'll be real fast. So nice. I actually need to get some other stuff for in this room. But for now, let's take a look at the our nether setup. And also see where our cans went. So, <laughs> I wish I would have recorded me setting this part up. Because I did so much, like, I was being attacked by ghasts the entire time. But anyway, first things first. Before we talk about this, we're going to talk about this item right here. The chunk loader. Turn the lasers on. The chunk loader is what makes the uh, makes this area stay loaded, even when we're not in the nether. Because um, if you know anything about Minecraft chunk loading, whenever you leave an area, um, Minecraft will unload the chunks. Basically turn that area of the world off. That way you save on um, memory and processor speed and all that stuff. Like You're not getting your resources all raped by Minecraft. See, there are fucking gas everywhere. I tried doing that one, I got blown to pieces. I tried to do it over there, it wasn't working, so I moved over here. Ah, oh, jeez. Look at all the gas. I had to freaking... Ah! I had to deal with all these gas while I was building this. <laughs> but yeah, the lasers indicate the chunks that are being loaded. So all the chunks inside those lasers are being loaded. Ugh! Time to get out of here. Jesus. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. Like, it was quite the adventure. Because I tried to build... Um, where the cobblestone was, I tried to build it out of stone bricks first, and stone bricks can't withstand being hit by gas explosion or gas shots, the gas fireballs. So I had to start over. That's what the other, that's what the other um, place was. Um, so anyway, as we can see here, wow, my my other things just completely disappeared. All right, so as we can see here, the uh, lava gets pumped out with the uh, Buildcraft pump, simple. And then it gets pushed into the liquid transposer and the magmatic engine. It's then picked up by the filter, which actually, I think I have this turned the wrong way. I need its, I need its butt, its little butt facing that way. There we go. There we go, and I got my, uh, got my lava cans back. So this chest is sucking out Oh, actually, it does need to face this way. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. So, yeah, the filled up lava cans will go in there. And then the filter on the other side, which I'm going to take out one for myself, is going to suck them up. So, first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to make some more tin cans. So, if you didn't know. That's how you make tin cans. There we go. And in the filter, I believe, we need to put a... Like that. That way it knows to suck up tin cans. So when you put the tin cans in there, the timer should tick, and it should pull some of the tin cans, so long as I have it done right, which I don't think I do. Like that. It can be finicky sometimes, I know that much. Let's try this. Let's try putting a timer on top of this block. I don't think this will make a difference, but I'm going to try anyway. Nope, didn't think so. Alright, one last thing. Let's try this. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Anyway, let's just go. I'll work on that later, but it, it should work. The basic idea is there. But I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I see, it's going to, I put a couple in there, it sucks them up, and they should, I need to make this go towards the top. There you go. And it should come out of there, go into the here, there you go. Then once I set up the filter on the other, uh, on the, uh, other side, it'll suck out the, uh, lava cans and push them into the, uh, red tank, or the big lava tank. So, I'll work on making this work um, completely correctly uh, in between episodes. Actually, no, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it right now. So, what we want this to do basically 
is suck out cans. So something else that we can go ahead and try is put the timer back down and rotate the screwdriver, or rotate the uh, filter with the screwdriver until it's facing the other direction. So it, that's its butt. Let's make its butt face the other way. Okay, is that working now? I don't think it is. Nope. It worked that time, but now it's stuck. Hmm. I'm gonna troubleshoot this a bit off camera and I'll be back. I got it to work. Okay. I forgot I needed to turn this to blue, like right here. I needed to tell it that it can accept stuff from the side from this filter. So, there we go. See? I'm telling it to take up empty cans, so now it's sucking up the empty cans and it's spitting out the lava cans. So now that this is working properly, and this is properly chunk loaded, that means that this stuff will continuously work. Oh, whoa. What's going on? Let me go ahead and grab one of these. No, I don't really need to. I'm going to go into it anyway. But yeah, anytime that there's empty cans in this uh, ender chest, this filter will suck them up into here. And then the liquid transposer will fill them with lava and spit them out. Let's go ahead and turn this motherfucker back on. There we go. That way it's, you know, making sure that there's lava in there. And uh, we'll, there's other ways that we can make sure that that thing will shut off properly when it doesn't need to work. But we'll worry about that. We don't quite have the stuff we need to make some of the logic gates and stuff to make that work properly. But we'll work on that later. So anyway, back into the overworld. Now we can make sure that this stuff is set up properly. A little bit of lag in between changing worlds. Give it a second and it should relax. There we go. Okay, so as we can see, we have the lava cans coming in. And then the other cans going out. Now in this filter, we want to put lava cans. And then down here, we want to do what we did over there, but for this side. Now I had the timer back there, but I want to be able to turn it on and off. Because sometimes I don't want this thing to constantly be, like, I don't need it to constantly produce lava. Like now, and there's no reason for it to be working. So we're going to close that up, and we're actually going to put it somewhere else. We're going to put our timer right there. Get our screwdriver and rotate it a bit. There we go. Now it should pulse properly. Good, we have a little bit of a deficit of lava. Now before we get that working properly, we want to make sure that these uh, this area down here is properly set up. Now the pipe that I was using over there before that wouldn't connect to the uh, filter was a sandstone pipe. Now I'm going to take cobblestone pipe, put it here, cobblestone pipe, put it there, and put the sandstone pipe right there. The sandstone pipes aren't going to connect to that filter which is really, really convenient. Now, they're made just like any other pipe, you know, um, two pieces of the type of pipe that it is on either side, on this side, and then glass in the middle. Now this, if I had some glass, would make a wooden pipe, but I don't have any glass, so. But yeah, sandstone pipe, same dealy. So now that we have all this hooked up properly, let's make sure that it's going to go down go and then the red is going to go down that way awesome that should work as intended now let's go down here and make sure that that's hooked up yep good now all we need to do is rotate this so it's turning the right way there we go that should work yeah, maybe that way yes maybe oh it's stuck so it's not going in the right direction Oh, actually, I believe... Yeah, because this is sucking the right way. Okay, so this is definitely facing the right way. We just need to make sure that everything comes out. Like, the machine knows where it's coming in. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. At least for me it is, because I'm bad at this. <laughs> the machine doesn't know where the input is. Like, the machine needs to know where it's going to be able to find 
um, these lava cans. Oh, and I think it just did. Okay, so blue's not the right one. Yellow's correct. Yellow's for the, uh, yellow tells it to pump out the lava that direction. The red tells it to go down. I know that for sure. I believe the lava cans, they go into this one. Yes, they go into the blue and then come up the red. There we go. So that's working properly. So we need the blue. Oh, by the way, there we go. Hmm. Let me mess with this a bit off camera and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. I'm pretty sure I got it working now. See? One at a time. There we go. What I had wrong is I'm sure some of you may have noticed. Um, if you actually hit the machine, see, with the wrench, see now it's fucked up. It'll change the uh, output facing. That's what we wanted it on. That right there. Because we wanted the blue, which was actually facing out this way, this direction, not this side like we were wanting. In other words, the machine was facing the wrong way. I'm still new with thermal expansion, so of course I make a lot of little mistakes like that. But anyway, um, why is it not dumping in? Maybe it's like full full. Maybe it can't maybe it can't fill up any more than that because that's full too. Or actually, I know what. No, it has power. And those engines ooh, those engines need to turn off. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and break one of these guys. And uh weep. So his uh internal amount of uh, lava goes away. Whoops. There we go. Let's make it so he can only accept redstone current. There we go. Oh wait. Yes, he needs a redstone signal in order to run. So all the lava gets dumped into that guy immediately, which hopefully gives us a bit of a deficit. So then we can make sure that this is going to work properly because I changed everything around. Hmm. Oh well, I'll worry about that stuff later. The the important parts work, and uh, I think I just need to make sure that everything is uh, facing the right way and going the right direction. Hmm. I don't know. It just bothers me that it's suddenly not working right. What color is this side? This side is red. Yellow. There we go. There we go. I forget that this part down here, I think, is the back. There. Now it's working properly. There we go. Man, sorry it took this. That took so long. I'm a little. I'm still pretty noob with all this stuff, but you know what I'm trying. But everything is working exactly how it, it's supposed to. These are being sucked up by the other um by the other pump and turned into lava cans, and the lava cans are being sent over here to be turned into this. So there we go. We now have a completely automated power system. The only time we'll ever need to like change it up or move it is when that lava lake in the nether gets completely sucked dry. Which shouldn't be too long. <laughs> Alright, so I am going to gather some stuff, take a look around and see what we haven't covered, and I'll be right back. Just kidding. We need to wrap up the episode. It's been a pretty long episode, and I still haven't quite covered everything that I've done. I'll come back next episode and cover some of the other changes that I've done, and um, a couple things that you should expect to see in the next few episodes. So I've been Landlin, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!